All right, so in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to draw the correct Lewis structures for molecular compounds and polyatomic ions. So I'm going to do one example in this video, and I'm going to do it step by step, and I'm going to try to explain all the steps along the way. So the example uh, that I've chosen is uh, the Lewis structure of CO2, carbon dioxide. So what is the Lewis structure of CO2? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to write the correct skeletal structure for the molecule, okay? And uh, to do this, we generally uh, follow a couple of guidelines. So first of all, hydrogen atoms cannot be central atoms. Uh, they can only be terminal. So uh, if, if you remember, hydrogen has one valence electron. It is, di it is uh, monovalent, meaning it forms only one bond, and it achieves what's called a duet. So hydrogen cannot form any more than one bond. A second guideline is that usually the less electronegative atoms occupy uh, central positions while more electronegative atoms occupy terminal positions. So if we apply these guidelines to the CO2 uh, molecule, um, the correct skeletal structure of this wouldn't be OOC because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, so oxygen would not be the central atom in this case. In this case, the correct skeletal structure is OCO. The less electronegative atom uh, of the two of those, which is the carbon, is in the central position. So the next step <coughs> is to find the total number of valence electrons in this molecule. And the way that we do that is you know, a, a good tip would be uh, for the main group elements, um, which, you know, what are the main group elements? I'm just talking about uh, everything except for the transition metals and the inner transition metals. So the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals, and then all the groups from boron to the noble gases. For those main group elements, um, the number of valence electrons is going to be equal to that group number. So carbon in group 4 has 4 valence electrons. Oxygen in group 6 has 6 valence electrons. The only exception to this is helium, which has 2 valence electrons, and it's in group 8 with the noble gases. So just, I guess, watch out for that. And also, when you're working with a total number of uh, valence electrons, uh, anytime you have a polyatomic ion, you need to add or remove electrons as necessary. So for each positive charge, you would uh, remove an electron and for each negative charge you would add an electron. That doesn't apply here because we have just a molecule, it's, it's not a polyatomic ion. Okay, so we can uh, go ahead and find the uh, total number of valence electrons in this thing. So we know that the skeletal structure is going to be O, C, O. So now let's find out how many valence electrons this total thing has. So there are two oxygens and one carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons, oxygen has six valence electrons, and there are two of them. So four plus the quantity of six times two, that is 16 valence electrons. And if you want, you can divide this number by two and that gives you the number of electron pairs. So 16 divided by two, um, that would be eight electron pairs. Okay, so now we have to move, uh, move on to the next step, which is to distribute the electrons among the atoms. And the way that we distribute the electrons among the atoms is first, place two electrons between every two atoms, okay? So in the case of CO2, the first step that we're going to do is we're going to place two electrons between these two and between these two. So in doing so, we've just used up two of our eight electron pairs, so now we have uh, six remaining electron pairs that are going to be distributed to the atom in some, to, to the molecule in some other way.
So once you place two electrons between every two atoms, you want to place electrons on atoms as lone pairs. And you want to do this in decreasing electronegativity order. So that means you start adding these lone pairs to the more electronegative elements first. Then you move on to the central atoms, which are less electronegative. And the way that you do this, uh, <clears throat> you stop giving lone pairs to the atom once you achieve an octet for that atom. So, and in the case of hydrogen, it would be a duet. So you're trying to get octets to as many of these atoms as possible. Okay, so we used up uh, two electron pairs. We originally had eight. <clears throat> now we have six electron pairs, and we want to add those electron pairs to the more electronegative atoms, which are the terminal oxygens. So we have six electron pairs. There's one, two, three. Now, now I, uh, I'm going to stop adding electron pairs to the oxygen atom because notice the oxygen atom now has an octet. It has, uh, eight it has that eight electron octet. So we just, we just used up three more electron pairs, so six minus three. Um, now we have three more electron pairs. And I'm going to add them to the other oxygen. So now we've used up um, all of the electrons in this molecule. Which brings us uh, to the next step. The next step is you want to form double or triple bonds as necessary to give octets to all the atoms. So the way that we do this is we move the lone electron pairs from terminal atoms. We, we move one or more, one or two lone pairs from a terminal atom into the bonding region of be, between the terminal atom and the central atom. And that, that'll give octets to all the atoms because notice so far each of the oxygens has an octet, but the carbon does not have an octet. It only has four electrons around it. So what we can do is we can take a lone pair from this oxygen, move it into the bonding region between these two atoms, and we can also take one of the lone pairs from this oxygen and move it into this bonding region. And what, what that is going to do is it's going to form uh, two double bonds. So we're going to have something that looks like this. That is the uh, Lewis structure um, for carbon dioxide. And it is commonly written like this. Uh, in this notation, the bonding electron pairs are shown as uh, lines and the valence electron pairs are shown as dots. I think this uh, notation is usually more common than this notation. Um, I think to most people it just looks you know, nice and clean compared to this one. So there you go. There's how to uh, do Lewis structures for molecular compounds and polyatomic ions. Um, many examples on the way.